Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone, and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And yes, yes, I'm back in the garage. <laughs> so, if you notice, I'm not exactly in one piece, right? If if you know the story behind what's going on here with the left side of my body, then you know it. If you don't, well, I had an accident and I'm, I'm, I'm busted up pretty good, but this week I was able to, to kind of tinker around and I was, I, I found out that yes, there are things that I can still do right now. And there are some things that are going to have to wait until I heal up a little bit more, but if you don't know the story of ours, what transpired, this right here is a live stream that I did and it's called Stuff Happens. And believe me, some stuff happened. So good thing is, is that I'm, I'm upright, I can walk around and I'm, I'm still amongst the living. So that is a good thing. Now, Let's go ahead and we'll just leave that off to the side because this video is not based on that. That video is based on what, what happened. So if you want to know what happened, that's, that's the video to go check out. Now, let's get back to the reason why I'm standing up here talking to you guys, right? Now, what we're going to do tonight. Yes, we are actually going to do something tonight. What we are going to do tonight is a technique, right? So your present a technique. Yes, I'm gonna show you guys a technique. And uh, well, let's let, again, let's back up a little bit. Why am I gonna show you guys a technique? Well, this week I've been in the garage and I have been putting together some kits for, for a commission that I'm doing, right? So these kits that I'm putting together, um, there is a certain technique that I'm using to put these kits together. And I want to share it with you guys because it really it's cool and it really puts the whole entire kit into a whole new level. And I, I want to I want to share that with you. I'm, I'm down to one last little building that I'm doing and it's like I got to stop. I got to make a video on this so I can share it with you guys. And there's going to be probably another video on top of this because the next step after the one that I'm going to do, I want to share that video or that technique with you as well. So you're probably asking, well, what is it? Well, <laughs> what it is in the kits actually came from these guys right here, Racetrack Scenics. And if you've seen other stuff on my channel and stuff like that, Yes, I do a lot of stuff with, with Johan and, and Kevin with Racetrack Scenics. And this, this set, this, this set of this kit, which, which is a collection of a whole bunch of different buildings, is kind of partial to me for a couple different reasons. One of which is because I had the privilege of working with Johan to collaborate with him on these kits and figure out certain things so that we can make them available to the slot car community. And that's really cool. I, I, that, was, that was fun to go ahead and work with them to, to get these things out as far as design and, and what buildings to do and stuff like that. So that part is really cool. The other part is this is the Targa Floria collection. And that is that is really cool. Targa is kind of partial to me, just for the mere fact, if, if you recall Deception, before I moved it, I actually built a Targa Floria pit building from scratch, and I had to manipulate it and stuff to make it work with my, my scenery and with my layout. I never, get a, never did get a chance to, per se, film that, but 
this is the the pit building right there and I actually have a little kind of short video kind of with pictures and everything which is that one right there which shows that pit building but so yeah Targa is, is kind of one of those one of those iconic tracks that I've always kind of it's just kind of that wow factor I mean you have the Nuba Ring, the old, you know, the actual Green Hell, the old track. You have the original classic Spa. Um, there was the Milia, and then there's Targa. And and Targa is kind of, it's in a level all by itself. So if you don't know about the Targa Floria, well, tell you what let's let's let me go ahead and tell you just a little bit about it I'm not gonna go ahead and do a whole entire voiceover thing and stuff like that because there's too much history with it and you know maybe down the road I'll, I'll start doing some of that I'm, I'm actually thinking about it because there's yeah but let me just go ahead and kind of hit on some of the the things of the Targa that are, are pretty iconic and what kind of makes this this whole entire thing just kind of stand out. Now, the target itself, the, the track, it was dreamed up. And the, it's not even a track. It's, see, that's the thing. They, in Sicily, in 1906, um, Vincenzo Floria <laughs> went ahead and he, he dreamed up this race around Sicily. And, it was a, a road race that went all the way around the whole entire island. And they actually did three laps on that track, that circuit. And one lap alone was 92 miles. So can you imagine that? A one, one lap, 92 miles. We talk about, you know, the old Nuba Ring and stuff like that, which is right around, what, 14 miles and 100 and some odd corner. This was 92 miles long crazy now that was in 1906 and throughout the years it, as it went on they they kind of re kind of took some stuff out of the track and then they would add back on and stuff like that as far as circuit goes but by the time it finally came to a close in 1977 it actually was uh, the world's oldest sports car racing circuit it went for all those years now also the other thing is that in 1977 they went ahead and and cut it off they, they quit doing it and the main reason for that was because of safety concerns and if you go ahead and research it and stuff like that it's not hard to understand why <laughs> now the, the circuit at the very end, when they finally did close it all down, they made it a lot, you know, a lot shorter than the 92 miles. Yes, a lot shorter. They brought it down to 45 miles. Damn. <laughs> 45 miles. And the thing was that from 1955 until 1973, it was part of of the World Sports Car Championship. Yes, the Sports Car Championship. That means you had Porsche 917s, 908s, you had Ferrari 512s. I mean, you imagine that. I mean, the, the Alphas, the 333s, all that other stuff was racing around the roads of Sicily. Not, not, not a, a, a a pristine racetrack but the country roads and everything else in Sicily going through the mountains and everything I mean just crazy stuff and then these guys wouldn't even have a chance to practice on the track as far as it being closed off they would come over there and practice but the roads were public roads and they were being used by the public while these guys were racing around in the Ferraris and the Porsches and, and everything else around the roads trying to learn the track so it's just nuts. I mean, the kahunas it would take to do that is just crazy, right? So, I mean, so yeah, I mean, there's all that. And in, in fact, Porsche, Porsche, the company Porsche, the 911, the Targa 911, yeah, 
is named after the Targa Floria. That or the Floria. I mean, it, it's that iconic. So if you if you've never known about the Targa, go check it out. If you do know about the Targa, it's kind of like, yeah, well, I know sir. Go check it out. I mean, it, it's a crazy as far as the history and everything else of the track. Now, so, so yeah, we're getting a little bit closer. You're starting to, okay, so, yeah, yeah, Targa Floria, right? Now, the, the collection that we were able to put together for, you know, to, to come out with is, is one of the most iconic corners of the whole entire circuit as far as, in the later years towards the end if, if 1973 is the last time they ever ran sports cars on it they shut it down after that and then they opened it up as far as like a rally type of thing and even before that it wasn't a per se regular race as far as a full grid starting off they would actually take them off in in certain i forget how many minutes apart from each other but it was almost like a time attack as far as the way it went but you know, when you're dealing with that many miles and everything else, it wasn't any time before the cars were battling each other going down the country roads and in the mountains of Sicily. So, pretty crazy stuff. Now, <laughs> the, the collection of buildings comes from a town that's in Sicily called, uh, was it Col Colisano? I'm probably butchering the name, but it's the Colisano, the town, and there was a corner that was there, right? And you'll see it. A lot of guys, they're, they're sitting up on the bank and everything else. There's a big old kind of rocky berm, and they're sitting up there, and there's these pictures of the cars coming around this hairpin corner in this town, okay? Now, the buildings themselves are modeled after this corner. Now, pretty cool stuff, right? Now, again, cool. So those are the buildings that are available now through Racetrack Scenics. And you kind of know a little bit about the history that goes along with it too. Now, not only that, but they also have the pit building and stuff like that. There's a couple other things they threw in there as far as that goes. So if you want to create a circuit that is part of the Targa Floria or Florio, they got the buildings for you, which is really cool. Now, <clears throat> what are we going to do tonight? Now that I've kind of ran my mouth on all that. Well, like I said, I'm putting together a, a five buildings. And as I'm building them, there's a technique that I'm using to go ahead and finish off the MDF prior to painting. And it's, it's a technique that takes a normal MDF kit and just puts it over the top, right? It just, it brings it into a completely different level. The cool thing about the technique is that it's extremely easy to do. That is the cool thing. It's not like I'm pulling some crazy thing out of my hat and it's difficult to do. No, it's simple to do. And the materials that you use are not expensive. They're very reasonable and yeah, it's really cool. So. That is what I'm going to show you guys tonight. Now, saying all that, me working with one and a half arms here is able to do this. Okay? So if you have both your arms and everything else, I know that you can do this. I know that you can do this. All right? So with that, why don't we go ahead and grab ourselves a donut and a cup of joe and... uh Let's do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start this little technique effect that I'm gonna show you guys. So, like I said, it's real easy in minimal amount of material to go ahead and do this. Now, the first part of it, we're gonna go ahead and use just some all-purpose joint compound, all right? So this is the drywall joint compound, and I'm just using two different types of brushes. Kind of using a, a small stiff bristle type of brush here and then i have a small little detail brush right here so those are the only things that we need to go ahead and actually do the effect later after 
our joint compound is dried and everything else, the second step of it is just using a PVA glue, which I'm using the Maj Podge matte finish, some water, obviously a little container that we need to go ahead and mix the water and the glue together. And again, two other little brushes, kind of a, a larger stiff bristle. And I also have kind of a smaller fan style uh, soft bristle brush here. Now, that's all you need. And yes, for this technique to go ahead and, and get it all squared away. And then at, at that point, the next step after that would be the painting process, which I'm not going to show you guys. It's, you know, use acrylic paints or whatever. But right now, what we're going to concentrate on is just the stucco style finish that we're going to put on this kit. And there's the kit right there. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple different things. So we're going to go ahead and do a stucco finish for the majority of the walls and everything else. And we also have brickwork to do, and we're gonna do brickwork with this joint compound as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started on this. So I got my kit right here. It's one of the, the Targa Florio kits for that corner. Um, there are, ooh, there's nine buildings for this whole entire corner section. I'm just doing five of them with, the, with this commission build, but there are a total of nine buildings. So kind of cool. I mean, there's, there's also, and the cool thing is, okay. And I'll just kind of point this out. This is one of the buildings right there and it has the garage. It has actual garage doors, has a bunch of other trim that goes on this, but this building right here has all sorts of different uses if per se you did not want to put a targa floria florio on your on your track and you know i was i've been kind of building these and stuff like that and this building has kind of stood out to me because i see a lot of other potential that could happen with this you could make it into a service station you could you know, make it into almost an, an old west type of saloon if you wanted to because of the high face and everything else that goes along with it. So it, it's kind of cool. Even though a kit might be designed for a certain function, you know, or it, it's, it's replicating something, you know, let your imagine, imagination just kind of go wild with something. And it, it's amazing what can happen. You can look at this type of stuff and go, wait a minute. You know, if, if I put like a roof on this thing and if I did certain things, I could turn this into something else. So that's that's kind of one of the cool things when you start looking at kits and stuff to buy. Maybe you don't see something out on the market. Kind of look at something and say, you know, what if I did this to it? Right. So, I you know, I just kind of want to throw that out there. So. Yes, this is one of the kits for the that corner, and there's actually two of them that look very similar to each other, okay? There's kind of a story behind the two, apparently, that was two sisters, they got married, but they built two houses right next to each other, and this is, this is one of them. Now, this has kind of a slanted roof to it, it has the one side here, this is the back side with the garage, and it has garage doors that go on there. And then this is the front. Okay. So kind of cool. Very unique. Now, the other thing with, with all this is if you look at the, the block work on this, it's going straight up and down. Okay. Now, don't let that discourage you. This, this actually is one of the, the first ones that came off the press. And this, this block work is being fixed. So it actually will look like actual block. Cool thing about it is with the technique that we can, we're going to use, we're going to correct all that with this technique. So we have our building, we have our joint compound, and we come back. Let's go ahead and get started on this let's bad boy. Let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, first couple of things you'll notice when you're looking at it is that you'll see the key marks right here. And what those are right here is there's a floor that goes through this building because it's two stories. So that's kind of cool. It's not just a, a box. It actually has, there's a level. There's two different levels in here. So 
if you wanted to go in and decorate the whole entire inside, you have that option with this. But that's what these little keys are right here, these little notches. There's a floor that goes in there. So we have that. You'll also notice that they've went ahead and incorporated a little bit of brickwork here and there just to kind of add a little bit to the kit, which is, which is really cool as well. Now, first thing we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and take our joint compound. All right, and I got some right here. You probably see it in the corner. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take a big old glop of it and I'm gonna stick it on here. Now, you can do this technique on different substrates as well, but um, be careful because this is, well, it's joint compound and it's, it's water-based, right? So on my original um, pit building that I made for the Targa Flora for Deception, I made that out of balsa wood, okay? And I went ahead and did this technique on, on that pit building. Well, being that it was made out of balsa wood, balsa really absorbs moisture. And when you introduce moisture to it, it has a tendency of wanting to warp and everything else. And even with that, when I tried to, you know, knowing that, and I was trying to compensate for it and everything else, the balsa, you know, it started to move. And so kind of keep that in mind. If, if you are, say, going to use this technique on something that you've scratch built as far as being built out of balsa, Keep in mind that it is water-based. It's going to absorb into the material. And if it's balsa, it will warp it. Okay. It is going to warp. So you're going to have to be gingerly kind of real light coats and everything else. It might even be the fact that you start to apply it and use a heat gun while you're doing it. So you're kicking it off real quick. So you minimize the amount of warpage. I mean, Balsa plank will actually warp just by painting it because the paint itself, the, the moisture in the paint will can warp the balsa. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're using balsa wood. Now, being that this is MDF, it's pretty pretty thick, our our you know our warpage is very minimal to none. Okay. Not to say that it can't warp. <laughs> but that MDF can't warp because it can, but being that I've went ahead and assembled this whole entire thing and glued everything together and it's holding tight, the idea that it's going to warp on me is, it's, it's not going to, it's held together. So we're compensating for that. So I went ahead and I took the, the joint compound, glopped it on there, right? Now with my brush, I'm just going to go ahead and take this and just kind of move it around, okay? And you'll notice as I'm putting it on, I'm using kind of a, a swirl technique with it, real tight swirl technique. And this is gonna kind of give you that, that stucco finish, right? So we come up to like the, the bricks up in here and I'm gonna kind of, I'm not gonna make it like a circle around it. I'm gonna kind of come into it with, with different angles, kind of like it's, um, Oh, shoot, like it's chipped away, okay? So I'm gonna kind of come in, and if you notice, ugh, broken ribs are so much fun. All right, if you notice, here on the edge, right in here, I'm coming down, I'm making a little bit jagged in that area, okay? It's not round like a ball, it's, it's jagged, so kind of keep that in mind with with this if you look at the old buildings and there's the the brick that's underneath and they had stuck over the top and it kind of chips away it kind of gives it that chip that chip look all right so we're doing that let me go ahead and get this kind of off here and then I'm just kind of hitting this and teasing it and I'm kind of got that little bit of a swirl technique into it now I'm not too worried about the roof because the roof I have um some tiles that I'm going to go ahead and do on the roof. So <clears throat> we can go ahead, I can go ahead and take care of that at a later date and clean that up. So what I'm doing is just kind of hitting this, moving it around, kind of nice thing about this with, 
with joint compound, you know, it's a filler. So we can fill all these different seams and everything out. So it doesn't look like it's an MDF kit anymore. It's like gonna be all filled in. So let me go ahead and do this just a little bit more. Take some of that, bring it in here. You notice I'm just kind of doing that, that swirl technique and it's tight, tight little swirls. Okay, kind of add a little bit more to my brush. Come into it. Just kind of tease it out. So like that. Now, we have this area with this keyway, right? Well, we need to fill that thing. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pretty good glop here. I'm going to move it into here. And fill that in. I'm going to clear my brush out over here. And then I'm just going to come in and tease over the top. Okay? And as long as you're, what we're doing is we're giving texture and everything else, and the texture will help hide these keyways. Okay, plus it has, you know, it has the filling, the filler um, capability to it. So we'll take care of all that. Let me go ahead and stop there and I can show you guys what this looks like. So let me go ahead and I'll pull the camera off the tripod and we'll bring it right up in there and you can see now we have that all sitting in there and the keyway that was down in there it's all filled in now <clears throat> let me go ahead and clear off this brush a little bit more and it'll come in so you see these areas were a little bit thick just kind of come in tap it down and just move that material around okay just move it around a little bit we're not you don't want a whole bunch on there for the mere fact that well for one thing we're going to have to let this completely dry before i take it to my next step the thicker that i put it on the longer it's going to take to dry you see up here on the top just these real thin areas are already starting to dry on me okay so we'll go ahead and we'll just hit this now when you are putting this on thin like that okay and it's it's starting to dry the uh the material will kind of change as far as its characteristic okay right now when it's wet it's real easy to go ahead and manipulate move around do whatever you want to it as soon as it starts to to dry it gets it will get kind of sticky okay and what will happen is if you try to come into those areas and work it after that it'll have a tendency of pulling the joint compound off so if you have an area that you want to go ahead and do some more work on, instead of doing that swirl, tap it, okay? And just kind of tap it like so. And it won't pull it off that way, all right? So there we go, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish off this side, okay? When we come back, we'll see how that looks. And then we have the two ends. Well, I'll, I'll finish off this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side too because it's the same thing that I'm doing here. And then we come back, I'll do the, the front and the rear and I'll show you how that all is gonna transpire. Okay, so I'm just about done with this one side right here, but there is one little thing I wanna show you. And this is with that smaller brush now. This brush has been in my container for a while. It's seen better days, but just go ahead and show you this. Okay, so we have this area in here where the brick is at, and you see how it's, you know, it's kind of jagged on the sides, but the brick is real clean in the middle, right? So we want to go ahead and change that up a little bit. So I'm going to take this and just with a little bit of compound on there, I'm just going to lightly hit it, okay? What this is going to do is, a, it's going to break it up a little bit. Plus, the other thing, it's giving a little bit of texture, you know, like some of that stucco stuck around, you know. So that's what we kind of want to do. So we got this on the side. Need a little bit more on this brush. So here we go. Yeah, there we go. Now we got some coverage. So let me go ahead and I'll get this. 
get that covered up right in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of work it down in. Okay, you see that? So it, it kind of, you know, it's kind of cool. And it might look minimal right now, but by the time it dries and you go ahead and go through all the different processes, these little tidbits like that just add that much more to it. It's, it's really cool. Now, <clears throat> with these Targa kits, they all line up together. So if you're doing these or whatnot, you can, you know, figure out how these all line up and, and everything else. And you're, you're not going to need to do the whole entire side if that's the case. You know, you might have to only do, per se, just some of it because it's exposed. But I like to go ahead and just cover the whole entire thing. That way, depending on what this customer wants to do with it, if they want to um, use the kits all together, it's all set. Or if they're wanting to put them apart, maybe they're going to use this in a different area, that'll work too. So it's kind of cool. And, and, you know, say it's not this kit, it's another kit, and you have uh, a back wall of the kit that isn't really finished or anything else. You can add this technique in, wow, look at it. I mean, that'd be, that would be really kind of cool, right? So I'm going to go ahead, take care of some of this other little bit of brickwork. Like I said, I got to do the other side. And then what we'll do is we come back, I'll show you the front and rear on how I'm going to do that. Okay, so now I have both sides done. Now I need to do the front, I need to do the back. Now, with the front on this, it has, they did kind of a block type of thing. And I explained how these blocks are being corrected. But on this building, I want to go ahead and do more or less a stucco finish over the top of this that's already been, you know, cut and everything else and on the lower part of it i want to kind of create a little bit of a brick motif all right so with the joint compound since it is you know a filler we can go ahead and fill all this stuff up so i'm going to go ahead and put this down in all right so i'll put it down in there and i'm going to do it the same way that i did the sides okay i'm going to use a little bit more because Obviously, I want to go ahead and cover this up, but you can see how it just goes and just fills it all up. So kind of use that little bit of a, a swirling kind of a technique. It's, it's kind of like this, except for it's real tight. You know, we don't want to do big ones like that because that's not going to look right. Right. So we want to come in and kind of as I'm doing it, I'm swirling it, but I'm coming in and out at the same time. Okay, so it's kind of, I'm doing this and I'm also swirling at the same time. And what that does is it gives it kind of that swirl, like, you know, stucco has kind of that swirl when they put it on with the, uh, the trowel. But when you stick it in like that, you're going to end up with a little bit more texture. It's going to give it a little bit, a little bit of a, a bumpiness to it. Okay, not going after a smooth. We want it a little bit bumpy. So if you can just go ahead and hit it like so, and you can get that kind of worked in there. Just like that. Okay, so now you can see I'm getting close to some of the trim and stuff that's down here. So let me let me get let me get rid of some of this on here. I'll bring it down close. Okay. So I'm real close to that window right in here. Okay, I'm going to stop short of it. All right, so I got that. Now, when we're doing detail work close to, you know, trim or whatever that you have on there, the bigger brush, it's hard to control. Grab your small brush, come in, and just with the same kind of technique, just kind of work it down in. You can use those bristles to kind of move the joint compound right down where you want to put it. It's a little tedious, but it works. And if you get some of the compound on certain areas you don't want it, just go ahead and take your, your finger or, or something. You can come in and just clean it off on the sides. And if you get a ridge there, 
Let's kind of pull it down into it. All right. So let me go ahead and hit this a little bit more just so you can see. And I'll kind of shut up <laughs> so you guys can watch this. And there you go. Okay. Just like so. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of all this upper. If we come back, we'll go ahead and start taking care of this lower area. And like I said, I'm going to create kind of a block work down in here. Okay, so now I have this side all done. And now what I need to do is do the brickwork that we're going to do down here at the bottom. Now, what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take some joint compound, quite a bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of load it up. I'm gonna put it on kind of thick, all right? So it's kind of thick. It's not, it's not real, uh, real thin. And so we'll just kind of glob it on here. Okay, let me move that over so you can see that. So I'm gonna glob it on. Get this all on there. Okay. Let's see here. There we go. So I got a pretty good amount that's that's on here now you can see it's getting down here on the lower part it's okay all right now I'm gonna kind of work it towards this trim by pressing the brush down and kind of shaking it towards it okay so I'm kind of shaking it towards it to kind of load up that edge over there now I'm gonna bring this back over and we're just gonna kind of Make it a little bit goopy. Okay, so now I got it like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some type of sharp auger or a point or, or something along those lines. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and draw out some bricks. Okay, so I'm just gonna come through. And I'm just gonna bring this down like that. Pull off the excess. Same thing here. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so now that I have a few lines here as far as mortar lines is what I've made, now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and make my bricks. So remember, bricks are going to be staggered, and I'm just tracing out different lines of bricks in here and this is actually going to give us a whole entire brickwork all the way down and at the same point in time it's got a lot of texture to it because it's all it's all out like this and everything else so they look like they're not finished bricks they look like they're like uh oh shoot rough cut bricks right almost like uh stone masonry and you can actually make river rock this way. You can do all sorts of different stuff this way. And if it loads up and it pulls off like that, just go ahead and take this and dap it right down where you want it. Like so. And just go ahead and move on. Make your other line like that. And then we're going to come down through here. Right, split that guy in half, split that guy in half, and so on. Come up here, same thing. Go ahead and make our lines, make our bricks. Use my finger, kind of help this guy out. It's almost like shaping Play-Doh. And there we go. So... Just go just like this. Now, if they're kind of out and you're not really liking the way they are, maybe they're too bumpy or something, just go ahead and take your finger and lightly tap down on it. And while it's still pliable like this, you can go ahead and play around with it quite a bit. And being that it's thicker, it takes a while for it to dry. So you have a little bit more time to play with it. It's not like when you're doing the stucco finish and it's thin. This being dry, or being thick will take longer to dry. So just go ahead and play with it until you're happy with 
the way that everything looks. And then once this dries, it looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this just a little bit. Bring up some of these lines. Okay. And there we go. The big thing with this is just have some patience and just kind of work it around. But if you've ever played with bricks and, and done any type of masonry work, same type of thing as far as just placing the bricks out the way you want, right? So there's all that. So this guy right here, I want to go ahead. There, I got him there. All right. So I just need to go ahead and finish off this side over here. And then I'm going to go around to the back and I'll show you, uh, show you how I'm going to do that one. Okay, so now we're over on the back side of it. And what we need to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a whole entire wall of a brick. Okay, now this one, again, like I explained earlier, they're, they're fixing this brick pattern. So it's not going to be so symmetrical like this. They're going to offset them and whatnot so it looks a lot better. But no worries because we're going to make all our own bricks back here anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my joint compound. And I'm going to work this in a smaller sections, okay? I'm not going to cover the whole entire thing and try to work it because like on the front side where we, we had it um, real thick, this side I'm not going to run it as thick, okay? So it's not going to be as thick. It's going to be thinner. And let me get this all put out here. I'm not worried about as far as making it um, like the stucco where I was doing those little swirls. No, right now I'm just trying to get it covered and I'm trying to get it so it's kind of a an even coat. So let's see here. And I will go to about right there. How's that? You notice I didn't even go all the way over, okay? I'm just gonna do an area that I feel comfortable with that I can that I can control and get done before the compound starts to set up. Now, the cool thing about this is that we have lines established. So I can go ahead and take this line and just trace down it, okay? And I'm going to do that for each one of these. That's kind of hard to pull that way. So I'm going to pull, if I can find the line. Come on, where's the line? Find the line, Boone. There it is. It's right there. Okay. This kind of went up. Got a little bit of a dry spot there. But that's okay. We can work with that. So, again, I gotta find, find that brick. Where's that brick? Okay, let me, let me start from the side. I gotta use my left hand. This isn't gonna be fun. Left side does not like to, to do this, but I don't see any other way I can do it right now. It's not working that way. It's kind of hard when you're crippled. Okay, there we go. There, I found the line. The line should be right there. There it is. Other line is right there. You can see I'm just using these lines drag across. Okay, make that work. Oh. Same thing there. All right, now, now I'm gonna find the first brick, which was right there. And I'm gonna bring this down. Same way that we did the other one. This one's a lot easier. 
since we're just doing straight bricks like that. And then come over here. Let's see here. I'm going to use this. We're going to cheat. Do it that way. The extra, I'm just going to clean off the end so I have a, a fairly clean point. Okay. You can see how this is already starting to take shape. Now we got those. I'm just going to come back. I'm going to split those bricks. Okay. Just like so. Real easy to do. And it's such a cool effect. That one. That one. That one. And there we go. So you get kind of an idea of how this is all going to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and just keep on following these lines. And then split them. Just like so. And since we have that joint compound on there, and it's, it's risen up, we're just scribing our own bricks all the way across. So I got this whole entire thing to do. It's gonna take me a little while to kick it out. And then once I get done with that, obviously this guy is fresh <laughs> and I can't take it to the next level, but I happen to have a few more buildings over there Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those and then I'll show you how we're going to use the PVA glue with water. And we're going to go ahead and protect what we've done, secure it. And uh, yeah, well, I'll show you when we come back. How's that? All right. So there we go. Brickwork is all done. So yeah, it turns out pretty cool. You can see the texture that's added onto it. And being that these are the old stucco buildings that you know, were built in Sicily, the brickwork and stuff was, well, <laughs> it has interesting brickwork. So it's not all perfect and, and, uh, and everything else like you would expect, like red brick or, or whatnot. It, it was like a cut stone. And so, yeah, this, this is going to look good when it's all said and done. So what I need to do now is let this dry. And we have a few victims right over there. So I'm going to go pick one of those. When we come back, we'll go ahead and do our PVA glue uh, trick on it and get all this uh, joint compound all sealed up. All right, so now we need to go ahead and mix our PVA glue with water. Now I'm just using matte finish Maj Podge right here. So I have my matte finish and I went ahead and poured out you know, fair amount into this lid. So let me go ahead and I'll pull this guy out so you can kind of see it. All right. So um, there are some methods as far as with PVA where you, you mix it really thin to go ahead and like seal up scenery or whatnot. We really want to lock this uh, joint compound into place. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this kind of a one to one ratio. Okay. So one part glue to one part water. So let me go ahead and get this in here. Hopefully it doesn't spill over the edge. I'm going to go ahead and mix this in. And it's going to make it a pretty watery mix. Okay. So it's not, uh, we're not, we don't want it like, like liquid, you know, like really, whoop, there it goes down my leg, but we don't want it like uh, real watery. We want a little bit of, a little bit of body to it, but not too much. Okay. We want it to be able, we want it to, to go on there, but we don't want it to just be like water and, and spread everywhere real easily. Okay, so you can kind of see, I mean, it's got a little bit of body to it, but it's definitely watered down. Okay, so that's a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go ahead and set myself up here. 
with our building. And this is another building in the set. There's two buildings that are very similar to each other, but this one is just a little bit different. And it's not so much different on the back, it's on the front that it's different. So if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you, that was, no, that building is actually sitting over there with those guys. And I grabbed this one because it's real similar, obviously, to what we just did. So we come back. I'm going to have this guy set up. And we'll go ahead and apply our PVA. All right, we're back. And I got a fly on there. Um, we're back. And I'm going to go ahead and get this PVA put on. So it's real easy. But you do notice that I have the building as far as the area we're going to work is laying flat and the reason behind that is i don't want the stuff running all over the place i want to be able to control it so i got my little mixture here and i'm just going to go ahead and put it on here okay and then we're just going to go ahead and let that soak right in okay and it's going to going to soak right into this and it's going to go ahead and seal it all down. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Let's just go ahead and spread this all on out. Let me go ahead and get a little bit more down on this. Show you what we got and as this starts to dry it's going to soak into it and uh lock everything down okay there we go we got that I laid that down now i'm going to take my smaller brush here and i'll work it down into my corners stuff like that we don't want this to we want this to lock down everywhere. We don't want to give it a chance to find a weak spot and then start uh, coming undone. Because it can do that. It will do that. If you do not use the PVA to lock it all down. Okay. So that's pretty much it. It's real easy, real straightforward. And there we go. So what I got to do is just go around this whole entire thing and just apply this PVA, let it dry. And then when it's like it's all dried up, you can go ahead and paint and finish everything else out. So really cool effect, easy to do. And uh, yeah, and it, it changes the whole entire aspect and appearance of your kit. So with that, I think this video is a wrap.
All right, so there we go. Another video complete. <sighs> it feels good to be back, guys. Feels good. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Another video complete. And I, I showed you guys how to do a pretty cool technique, you know, as far as that effect. And it's amazing what you can do with joint compound, really. I mean, it's not just for drywall, no. It is a, a modeler's super goop. <laughs> you can use that stuff on anything. I mean, I use it on polystyrene for, for rocks, and I, I did the mountain, and I, I mean, I even used it when I did the, uh, the waterfall in the, the river, and brickwork and yeah it just keeps on going on and on and on and then I showed you guys how to use it on MDF to go ahead and create a stucco finish brickwork and then on, if you saw on that little flyover one of the buildings the one that's all complete at the very end the corner building actually had kind of a rocky type of um, effect on the back side of it and that was done with joint compound as well so yeah pretty cool now let me go ahead and just kind of run over this whole entire joint compound thing all right let's let's go ahead and get, and get this out so with the joint compound it's very important to go ahead and seal it with that pva and the reason why i say that is that with this when it's on the substrate and you're building it up okay it, it has a tendency of separating itself from whatever you're you're putting it on so say the MDF or the the balsa like I did on the um, pit lane for the my Targa Floria when deception was you know the original deception so yes it is very important to go ahead and seal that with that PVA mixture now as far as dry times with it normally with the um, joint compound I give it 24 hours before I go ahead and hit it with the glue okay and sometimes I might even just set it off to the side and give it a few days all right I want to make sure that stuff is nice and dry before I introduce any type of, of, of fluid to it any type of water or anything like that so make sure that's dry before you go ahead and do the PVA. And then once the PVA is on there, give it at least 24 hours to dry and bite in and do all its wonderful things that it's doing for you on that. Then after that, you can go ahead and do your painting process. So you can go ahead and paint with your acrylics or being that it's all sealed up, I mean, you can use enamels on it whatever you like to do, dyes, sky's the limit. Now that the PVA's on there, it just locks everything into place. So, I think we covered everything, right? <laughs> but there you go. So I showed you guys the effect on how to do the stucco and how to do the brickwork. And then also, if you noticed on the flyover, the first building that was on the corner, okay, if you looked on the back side, it had stonework on it. The whole entire back side was all kind of like stonework. That was done again with the joint compound. So yeah, I mean, you can do all sorts of different stuff. Just, just let your imagination go, right? Just let your imagination go and create and it's fun. All right. So now that we got that all going and I got the effects all going, the kit still needs some need to work right they're still not done there's there's painting that needs to be done trim work that needs to be put onto it and last but not least i need to do a tile roof okay if you did you notice on the flyover that one building at the end that one's all complete and it has a really cool tile roof on there well i want to show you guys how i made that tile roof as well so next time that we go ahead and meet up in the garage I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to build that tile roof. So I thought it'd be kind of fun, you know, let's kind of, kind of shake things up and do some kind of different videos here. So there we go. Now, if you're interested in purchasing these, these kits and everything else, these are the ones that I have right here, only five. 
there's an additional four onto them. So there's nine buildings total for this whole entire Targa Florio kit as far as the that corner section. So go over to these guys, go check them out. Plus there's the pit building over there and there's some other stuff. And then they've got their whole entire assortment of all the other crazy stuff. And uh, we're in the month of December and, and Johan and Kevin are just <laughs> releasing stuff left and right. I, I lost count as far as how many kits they've released just this month of December. So again, if you haven't been over to their, their website or if you haven't been over there for a while, go back over there because there's gonna be new stuff. There's always new stuff at Racetrack Scenix. So very cool, all right? So if you like this video, like it, share it with others, and please subscribe to my channel, all right? I really appreciate it, it's cool, right? Be part of the family, subscribe to the channel, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we also have that which is the Facebook group and that which is the Instagram group Plus we have this right here, which is the buy me a coffee app and that one right there Which is the patreon group patreon group is really cool. We do a lot of cool stuff have zoom meetings everything else It's worth just checking out. Just just go over there. Look, you know It's not that much. Just go check it out and there's all sorts of stuff going on and me being that I'm laid up I got much going on so we're kind of having more than usual zoom meetings and stuff like that so yeah come on over check it all out also, also on top of all that we have the Boone slot car merchandise we got two different style of t-shirts going on got the keep it in the slot which is this guy, which has to do with the waterfall and the Ferrari in there and the poor guy, you know, didn't keep it in the slot and now he's swimming. And then we have the let's do this. So we got those two and we have the coffee mug. So going over to Conquest Racing, go check that, or not nah, Con Conquest Lair. <laughs> go I'm tired. Go check that out. And uh, yeah. We'll go from there. All right. So next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, we're going to go ahead and keep on doing these technique effect or effects techniques. And I want to show you guys how to make that tile roof. All right. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs>